Hey guys, this is Sheila Zelge of Sheila & Company at Samson Properties. As you all know, I love to highlight local gems of the DC metro area that inspire, encourage, and empower our communities. We'll be talking to the founder of District Taco, Mr. Osiris Hoyle, and see why he started and how he started and why DC is a great place for his business. So without further ado, come on guys, let's go. Cyrus, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how your story of District Taco embraces the American dream? I'm from Mexico. I'm from Yucatan, Mexico, and I came to um, the United States when I was um, 17 years old. As an immigrant, you know, you start in from the bottom, right? Um, I had to, um, at that point, I was working as a dishwasher in, in a restaurant. I always um, kind of thought about how can I improve so I can make, you know, a little bit more money. Um, I m met this girl um, and she was the waitress and, and I pretty much, you know, I was the dishwasher, right? Yeah. She was really nice to me and um, she's um, an American and I felt like, wow, you know, she's really nice to me and nobody has been nice to me and right. I felt like um, I needed to learn the language because, you know, Jennifer. I want to I wanna talk to Jennifer, right. <laughs> you know, and I want to make a little bit more money. Yeah. So, so I decided to go to school, okay. right? And unfortunately, you know, because I was working really um, long hours, I was getting so tired um, at my class and falling asleep. Mm -hmm. So the counselor one day just, you know, pulled me aside and she was like, Osiris, you know, you're just wasting your money at school. Um, so, I, I work in a restaurant bar, okay, in the evening. After I clock out, I will go to the, um, uh, to the bar, okay? And, and I started talking to drunk people, right? <laughs> yeah. They were my best teachers. From then, um, I learned, I was able to learn the language, you know, just to a point where I can ha get a promotion, mm -hmm. okay? and just keep learning the, the business, you know, sure, yeah. in, in the kitchen, not as much, you know, the business on the outside. Sure. Um, where the product was coming and, and all that, right? Yeah, between 2006, 2007, then I got a job, actually 2006, sorry, because then I got a job in the construction industry, mm -hmm. okay? So the market crashed in 2000, um, 2008, yeah. and when the, uh, the owner of the company came to the project, right, and, and he was, telling me that they couldn't afford me anymore. One of your lowest points. My lowest point, right. you know, and in the meantime, um, I, I used to cook, you know, on the weekends for my friends, mm -hmm. okay, and I'll make carnes asadas, ceviche, my salsas, right, you name it. I was like, um, during the week I was a construction worker, on the weekends I was a chef, right. And, um, and they always told me, hey, Osiris, you should, you know, um, open a restaurant or um, borrow your salsas because they're so good. During that time, um, my neighbor, uh, Mark Wallace, okay, I used to go to his house, you know, and he used to tell me the same thing. And he said, well, look, when I go to Austin, Texas, so first of all, you have a great food. When, when I go to Austin, Texas, there's a, um, always um, food trucks selling breakfast tacos, right? Why don't you just investigate? Maybe you just can do that. I was like, you know, um, we might have something going on right here with my food. I went back and I said, Mark, you know, there's a food truck, but it's $100,000. I don't even know I can, you know, get $100,000. But there's another one, it's a taco stand. It's a hot dog stand that we can make a taco stand, but I have the money for it. And it's like, just, you wanna do it? And I'm like, yeah, I wanna do it. I have, you know, but I, I don't know where to find the money. It's like, let's do it. I'll give you the money, you know, and we'll create a business. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna go for it. He clearly you know? believed in you. Yeah, I mean. He saw something in you. We started the business in, um, in 2009. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 2009. Yeah. Wow. Okay. In 2009, um, just with the taco stand. 
I was like, man, how are we gonna survive here? <laughs> you know, like there's Chipotle, you know, the line out the door, and there's the whole fridge, the line out the door. And I'm just like right there calling people to try my food, sure. right? But I was making, you know, my guacamole fresh, uh, my pico de gallo fresh, and, and all those ingredients, you know, that need to be fresh, you know, with the uh, my uh, carnes asadas, you know, the salsas that I make. People love the product. And what did People, they love about it? Was it because it was so fresh? It was so fresh. It was um, something that um, is unique. Right. Okay. Um, and, and it's, it's definitely a, a product that it comes from Yucatan, Mexico, okay? Um, that is so simple, but it's so delicious, and you know? Different. And different. Right. But there was one time where I need to cook my beans um, the night before, and, and I put the beans around 8 p.m. to cook, right? I was, you know, drinking a, a beer, you know, almost every day because I needed to go to sleep, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, in one of these nights, I just turned on the TV, right, while the beans were cooking in the house. Um, and, um, and I fall asleep, right? I fall asleep. I, I, I burned the beans. I'm not sure if you ever burned beans before, but the smell is horrible. Mm -hmm. I, I was pretty uh, devastated, angry, frustrated, you name it. Depressed too, mm -hmm. because I was not making any money. Um, so, and I was praying. I said, God, just give me a sign of something. At that moment, my, my daughter started crying, okay? She was a newborn, and it's one of these, when the signal was that I have to keep doing it for my family. And I said, this, okay, well, that's the signal I was waiting for. So I went for, you know, and, and from there, right, things are getting better from $150 to 500 to at some point we had the, um, the line around the block. Wow. Yeah, so Chipotle was there, I was still on their customers, you know, Baja Fresh was there, I was still on their customers, you know, and, and, and the product was awesome. It's awesome. Plenty of people all the time that say, Sheila, you know, why should I choose this location to live? Why is this a great location to be in? So what do you, what are the reasons as to how you pick the locations that your restaurants are in right now? Yeah. And why do you think those are great locations? Yeah. You know, we always look for markets um, where there's a lot of fun, okay. right? Where um, there's a high school, right? And, um, and where's the, um, where people we know, where people want to eat healthy, mm -hmm. you know? Um, they're health conscious. And, um, and if there's a Harris Theater down there, if there's a Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, we want to be in the same neighborhood. Because we're providing, you know, the freshness as you know those companies are selling um, so for us you know that's how we, we choose our location and any final message you want to give to our viewers that might be inspiring empowering or encouraging well I mean one of those things is like um, persistence yeah. right uh, you have to be persistent um, you never give up that's one <laughs> you know it gets really hard really hard depressing you name it right but you gotta believe in yourself that you can pull it through. You know, I mean, if you and if you're doing something that you don't love to do, right? It's not, it's not gonna work. About? You gotta yeah. be passionate. You know, um, I think it was one of one of the things that strikes me every morning to get up and and, and get something accomplished. Right? Um, nothing is easy. I mean, America is the uh, the opportunity land. It's the American dream land. Exactly. Right? So, um, and when people think that the American dream is dead. It, you know, I can prove them wrong. I think it's more about um, things get harder and harder and harder, you know. So, and, and the opportunities are there. So you just gotta, just gotta look for them. Just keep going. That's it. All right, Osiris. Thank you so much for your time. Your story has definitely been very inspiring. Well, and thanks, I hope, Sheila. I hope someone out there who's listening gets inspired by your story and actually goes for their dream too, like how you yeah. did. And you gotta make sure they come and try our tacos. Yes, still. I love your tacos. Try his tacos. Number one. <laughs> All right, guys. Back to you at the studio. Thank you.